When Ryan's when it's time to begin, it's on the review but round with John Pollock and waiting the A team that makes sense of these things we see in the ring every week on TV. It's review around for Monday night, then load a Tuesday morning from the Fight Network site. It's review around for Monday night on USA now on the John and Wade take the mic. It's review raw. On Monday night, it's John Paul Lick and Wei Ting. What's happening, Wei? That's not bad. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. You uh, you should work on the uh, the rhythm though. Maybe uh, you can do. A I rap. don't have rhythm. Maybe you can give us a guest rap verse, and you could do a rap remix of our theme song. Have you seen our friend Shane Smith's new rap video? Nope. You haven't seen this thing yet. No. Oh my gosh, it's uh, it's, it's really, really good. good. The Toronto Sun just did an interview with him. Wow. Yeah, cool. with this rap really Hulk Hogan's in the rap video. No way. Yes, you wow. gotta go uh, check it out. I will check that out. We're chatting about Monday's Raw from Richmond, Virginia, coming out of the Payback pay-per-view event, which if you want a full rundown, you can go download Live Audio Wrestling from Sunday night for a full match-by-match review. That's how Way found out what happened at Payback. Yes, sir. And uh, you gave it a thumbs in the middle. Um... I, I won't even dare to rate it. Okay. Triple H and Stephanie came out. This was Stephanie's first appearance on Raw since the night after WrestleMania. They had a table set up in the ring with a title underneath a sheet, which they would later unveil to be the same old intercontinental title that we have been seeing for years. And Stephanie talks about life being better when you are a winner and mentions Seth Rollins' performance last night and that the challengers that lost in the four-way are all going to the back of the line. Stephanie notes that Brian is watching at home before she realizes Daniel Bryan does not own a television and is probably off picking berries somewhere and says she was right about Brian, who has vacated two titles in a year because his body just simply could not hold up. There was a sign in the crowd, which was very great. It was Richmond needs a WrestleMania, which <laughs> on the geography of where WrestleMania is going, uh, God bless this fan. This is R- R- Richmond in what state? Virginia. Okay. With, with all due respect to Nate Milton, I don't think his home state is getting a WrestleMania what is ever. The, what is the closest major city? I mean, no, is Richmond the biggest city around it? Uh, there's Richmond and, and Norfolk. 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 Can we say that? That's how you say Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk. Um Probably never do a WrestleMania in Norfolk. <laughs> the imagine, the, imagine the puns that you oh, can man. get. Oh, <laughs> man. Seth Rollins has just Norfolked Roman Reigns <laughs> out of his Royal Rumble championship shot. <laughs> oh, boy. We are very immature. We're making a, a harder night for one Matt Sarge. Uh, the vacant title is going to be decided at Elimination Chamber which they put over the ominous 10 tons of steel and two miles of chain. Boy, giving yourself goosebumps, isn't it? Mm, Two miles, wow. Seamus interrupts him, says he's a big fan of Hunter and Stephanie, which Hunter, likewise, as we've seen over the last number of years. Stephanie says she likes Seamus' new look, and Seamus takes credit for ending the Yes Movement, and therefore he should be awarded the Intercontinental Championship. They replayed. They showed basically a little highlight pack of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Seamus Bryan match, and uh, it was really tough to watch in hindsight. Yeah, because that is the match where it was believed that Bryan really got got messed up in. Yeah, and then went on the European tour and got sent home early. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the time, I'm sure it was nothing, but it's one of those things where like you watch it in hindsight and you you think about the state that this guy is in right now, and uh, wow, it's it's a lot harder to watch now. By this, by this logic, Ahmed Johnson could have just been a multiple-time champion based on, based on his uh, mm-hmm. recklessness. So then Ryback comes out. His ribs are all taped up from the senton he took from Bray Wyatt at Payback, which they did show a replay of, which just looked horrendous while you were watching this live. Um, he agrees that Sheamus looks stupid, makes a challenge for tonight. Stephanie just announces both will be in the chamber match. There will not be a match to determine who is in the chamber. Just both of them are in, regardless of the fact Ryback lost at payback, and mm. the guy who beat him and would win tonight, nowhere near this title. Mm-hmm. It's only the IC title. Exactly, which is the latest <laughs> argument of why we need to see the IC title mm-hmm. in existence. So we had a match with Sheamus and Ryback. This would be the first of like three matches where the story was working over the injury of the guy who got injured last night on the show. This one being Ryback and his ribs. 
that Sheamus just went over. They went through a commercial break. Ryback lifted Sheamus, slammed him into the ring, hit a spine buster. Ryback would gorilla press Sheamus and drop him on the announce desk. They're back in the ring. Ryback's going for the shell shock. It's hitting the ribs. And then Sheamus fakes an eye injury, letting the referee go tend to him. And then as the referee is trying to tend to Sheamus, he cheap shots Ryback and hits the brogue kick, gets the win. And then afterwards, Sheamus reveals that he did not, in fact, get hit in the eye. And his eye was fine. Oh, An old man. MMA move. <laughs> Fake the eye injury. Fake the eye poke. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think Ryback's actually doing pretty well as a fan favorite. Um, he had a good know. match with Bray at the pay-per-view. Sheamus, likewise, I think a much better fit in this role. Um, yeah, both of them are sort of in that IC title mix where you're pretty much at the same place whether you win or lose. Hunter and Stephanie are in the back, and Kane walks in, says he saw a new side of Rollins at Payback, and he's finally grown up. And they come up with this idea. Rollins as the architect of a dream, which would be the name for our main event segment. And they all have champagne that Rollins brings them. Thanks, Kane. But then says how he should be thanking Rollins because Rollins saved Kane's job last night at Payback. Ambrose walks in. He says how Rollins needed four people to win at Payback, and he wants to give Rollins a rematch because when the last time they had a singles match, it was Ambrose who prevailed. Kane says the champion gets to decide his future, and Rollins informs Ambrose that he is at the back of the line along with Roman Reigns and Randy Orton, and then... It's left to Ambrose and Kane, where Ambrose insults Kane for no longer being a monster and takes off, and Kane makes a match between Ambrose and Bray Wyatt for later in the night. Yes. Um, you know, Ambrose, Dean Ambrose pretty much was was positioned as the main baby face of the entire program. Yeah, we had no Reigns. We had yeah. no Orton on this show. Mm -hmm. It was just Ambrose and Cena as your, your top faces on the show. I'd say Ambrose above Cena. Yeah, Cena, he was, he, Cena is pretty much, you know... St uh, he's like in his own himself. world. It's almost like he's not even part of the show anymore. He's actually in the mid-card, but it's like a guest-starring role in the mid-card, you know? So it still feels important. He's like the musical act on SNL, where it's like the, they're not really in the sketches. They're they're part of the show, but they're in their own world. Uh, Okay. Yeah, sure. Not not really the... That, he was like playing Ambrose the role of Rihanna, Rihanna from Saturday Night. Okay. And... Dean Ambrose was Louis C.K. minus the child molester jokes. All right. Cool. That's another thing I didn't watch. So All you right. have to fill me in on that. I watched a lot of stuff this weekend. Yeah, it sounds like it. I've but kind of overdosed on wrestling, to be honest, over the last few nights. Mm -hmm. Renee Young welcomes Neville to the ring for an interview. He says how he has competed all over the world, but there's nothing like the WWE. And then he is asked about his transition from NXT when Bo Dallas interrupts him to remind him of what he was doing in NXT and calls Neville the little engine that couldn't, saying his career isn't looking up. And then Neville brings up the fact that it was Bo Dallas that Neville beat for the NXT title. They fight. Neville has his left knee taped up from last night against King Barrett, which leads to a rematch between Neville and King Barrett with Bo Dallas on commentary. So the whole match featured Barrett attacking the knee and leg of Neville. Neville finally came back with some leg kicks, went for a German, but the knee buckled. And then he went for a springboard, thinking, ah, I can't get him up for a German suplex. Bet my leg will hold up to this. It did not. He crashed from the top and just fell down and then took a bull hammer elbow, and Barrett got the win. Dallas attacked Neville after the match, and Neville has fallen down yet another slot to feuding with Bo Dallas. It definitely is a, a drop down. I mean, I I really don't get too upset about you know the way Adrian Neville is positioned. I mean, I think a lot of people have really high hopes for him, but I, the way I just see them position guys as they come in, especially lighter guys, is you start from the bottom, and this is a first feud, like a first real feud for Adrian Neville. Given the fact that I, I thought one of two things for the chamber match was that you would have a few main eventers, a part of it to make the title big. Mm -hmm. Or it was going to be your mid-card guys. And we're getting our mid-card guys, but this was kind of confirmation. Neville is not part of that group. Right. That's true. I, I, and I imagine a lot of it has to be, you know, are they, do, they, do they trust this guy yet? You oh, know? By the way, R-Truth is one of those guys. Yeah. I think a lot of it, is, it comes down to how long somebody's been on the roster, you know, and, and, and it's like there really is sort of a get-in-line mentality. You know what I mean? Unless you're Kevin Owens. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's then you get to the front case. of the line. 
Each and every week when you tune in to review a Raw, you can win a t-shirt courtesy of our good friends at Pro Wrestling Tees. All you have to do is watch for the secret question, which will be displayed during review a Raw, and then tweet us your answer at Law Radio to be entered in a draw to win a t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees, including the Law's own store at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Law. So, Titus O'Neil is named the Celebrity Mega Dad of the Year. Nice God, award I, I coming his way. That. Wow. The Celebrity Mega Dad of the Year. And uh, what was the justification? Like, how, what has he done outside of the WWE? Had children. Um, Two of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know what the criteria was the for celebrity, celebrity Mega Dad. Mega Dad. Like, it's ha- not just a dad. What was the organization that chose this? I didn't catch it. He must have done something like charitable or something. And then people will correct us, I'm sure. Rusev I'm sure comes. He's a great dad. I, I'm sure he is. He's, he's Someone fact award. check us if there's anything to the contrary, no, but I'm, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's an awesome dad. Rusev comes out by himself. He says there will be no Lana tonight. Lana needs to learn her place. He only speaks for himself. He knows how to say I quit. So if he wanted to quit, he would have quit. Says that Lana quit because she's weak. And he wants the match restarted right now. And then Lana comes out, and Rusev is insulted that she has disobeyed his orders. And Lana gets on the microphone and says, Rusev is misunderstood. She believes in him, and she's believed in him from the beginning. Back in the Alexander era of Rusev. Thought that he would be the first person to ever make John Cena quit, but that didn't happen. And she tried to protect him because she cares for him. And Rusev comes back and says, you and your feelings, you're pathetic. You're disgusting. And she says that she, that he was quitting in Bulgarian, and then he tells her to get out of here, that nobody needs her, and she leaves to go to the back to booze. And I thought this was a great segment for Lana. I thought she was very good here. I thought it was a very good segment. I thought Rusev was tremendous. He, he was he was very good in the I Quit match, just yeah. with his selling, these new screams he gives out. Yeah. Like, I thought there was a point in the payback match where his mouth was so wide open, I thought his jaw was going to lock. Like, it was so uncomfortable just to watch. As someone that has has dealt with this ailment, that's all I could focus on. I'm like, this dude's jaw is going to lock, and he's legit going to have to quit this match. I wish that they had pointed that out in the commentary. Oh, He, he might get locked jaw. Listen, uh, you can sympathize too, Way. Nothing worse in the world I than lock jaw. I've had lock jaw. On live well. television, no less. <laughs> Um, but uh, Rusev was very good Rusev here. Rusev was great. I mean, I feel like there, it's a real, it's a real talent to be able to just shout with so much emotion and and to do it very convincingly. I think you can easily get into pro wrestling phase. You can get into Hulk Hogan phase where you're just kind of shouting, but not, it's not believable. But when Rusev shouts, especially in in, in his language, it's it's like here's a guy who's angry. Like I really really buy it. Lana, not so much. I mean, I think she's doing a great job. Obviously, the, the the audience loves her, loves her as a baby face. It's working, whatever they're trying to do. But um, maybe it's just because of the terrible accent. You know, this accent is just like both of their accents are slowly, slowly fading away. Like Rusev is just admits today to being speaking English perfectly. It's getting you know? very confusing that. Everything is Russian, but we acknowledge he's Bulgarian. He's the Bulgarian brute. He speaks Bulgarian, but everything is Russian about him. Yeah. It's getting a little uh, confusing. But believe me, this uh, this version of Rusev, I think, is it's, losing it, Lana is not going to be the worst thing in the world for this guy if he's protected because yeah. I think he is evolving. Definitely. This is the natural next step. I mean, I still think that he's better with uh, Lana, but I think the fact that he's speaking up more now and that he's capable, I, I have a lot more confidence in his ability to be successful and without he, her. And if he wins the intercontinental title, he will rule the continents, Ooh. including North America. So he trumps John Cena. He should. Point. Like, yeah. he literally should. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I think it was a great segment. I'm still a little upset that they're going through with this breakup. I thought Rusev was great. Lana... She's good, but um, the, the whole accent thing, I, I have to figure, you know, she's not going to stick with The this accent's right. going to be gone. Yeah, she's not going to be able to stick with this entire, her entire career. I mean, I, you know, she probably won't last a summer without the, with this accent. So how are they going to come up with the storyline to drop this thing? 
Catch the entire live audio wrestling network of podcasts. We have daily shows up at fightnetwork.com and liveaudiowrestling.com. You can also listen for free on iTunes by subscribing to Live Audio Wrestling, and you can also listen on the free Fight Network and Stitcher apps. Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt were next. Cole referred to Bray's fans as the Fireflies. The Fireflies. Both Wyatt and Ambrose are wrestling in their t-shirts. Bray now has a WWE shop t-shirt. One of those characters... Well, he's, does, he's always had one. Has it always been a... Well, it's a new shirt at least he has. Right. They got to make that money, man. Michael Cole also For noted... Wrestling.com slash law. <laughs> Michael Cole noted this is a rare in-ring appearance for Bray Wyatt on Raw tonight. So he's now a special attraction. They showed a replay of the Bray senton just destroying Ryback's ribs at payback. Uh, They had a lengthy, lengthy match. Um, Some of the highlights, Ambrose hit a suicide dive. Ambrose blocked the sister Abigail and then went for the slingshot clothesline, but Bray turned around, hitting him with a clothesline. Am- and got a two count. They traded slaps. Ambrose finally hit the slingshot clothesline. And then Bray knocks him off of the turnbuckle, misses the senton off the second turnbuckle. And then Mercury and Noble show up. They distract Ambrose and the referee, allowing Bray Wyatt to hit the sister Abigail for the win. And then security celebrates with Rollins at the top of the ramp. So just to refresh, if you lost to Bray Wyatt at the pay-per-view, you get an IC shot in the Elimination Chamber. If you lose to Bray Wyatt on Raw, you get a WWE title shot at the next pay-per-view. So <laughs> for upward momentum, you want to be losing to Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And Bray gets nothing. He's not on anything at the pay-per-view. Well, I've, I think I've learned that as a wrestling fan, wins and losses, uh, especially on Raw, really don't matter all that much. And so I don't really pay that much attention to it. But I'm glad somebody is checking. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful pattern they have set out. Yeah. Uh, you know, just watching this, I thought it was a good match. You know, both guys um, really, I mean, the whole what you really notice about the show now is that this, you know, it, it, the whole show is being taken over by the, sort of that new generation of guys like the, you know, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys and, and, and Bray Wyatt and all these guys. And it's... Uh, I think we're like very comfortable with that now to the point where it's not even noticeable anymore. But um, I, I, I think Bray's in ring, which I personally don't get to see too often because he is a special attraction. Exactly, on Raw. a rare in ring uh, appearance. I really like it. He's just, he's so explosive, you know, he, and it fits so well with his character. This just sort of like, kind of like slow walking, like creepy dude, but then when he snaps, he snaps and puts it into every movement, including all of his suplexes, including all of his clotheslines. It's just very explosive, and he does that very well. There were more Tough Enough videos. Trust me, we got better ones. Kofi and Big E come out, and they announced that Xavier Woods has been banned from ringside because of the way they won at payback, calling it an injustice, which after seeing Xavier Woods over the last while at ringside, I will also call an injustice that he wasn't out there. He's been great at ringside. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me about this finish from last night. They had uh, – Xavier Woods was not part of the two out of three falls match. Yeah. So they uh, dropped Cesaro on the top rope, neck yeah. first, and then with the referee's back turned – Xavier came in, small packaged Cesaro, and took Kofi's place. Right. And the referee turned around, and he was not able to see Xavier Woods, so he counted three. Yeah, so he's, they did twin magic. Uh, they switched, yes. They did twin magic, like, with two black people. If you watch it, it's, I mean, it's really no different than what the, I mean, the Usos have done it. Yeah, but those guys are twins. Uh, yes. <laughs> and there was just two black people who happened to have similar, they both have dreads. I mean, you watch this. The referee was like out of position as well. He wasn't even on the side that Xavier Woods was on. I'm just teasing. <laughs> it's teasing. I didn't book it. I'm not defending it. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's amusing. It's just amusing to me. Um, so <laughs> they come out. Xavier Woods is banned. So they're taking action against this. And... Big E insults the people of Richmond, calls this a backwater state. And then they explain the concept for the Elimination Chamber. There will be six teams in the match. Two teams will start, and thus four people will start the match. And then a team will come in through each interview. 
as Michael Cole called them before he was corrected, and they were called intervals. So maybe we had, they'll do interviews outside the ring. Uh, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> Just like maybe we a debate. Six a debate in once. the chamber. <laughs> Biggie and Kofi taking on Kid and Cesaro for the tag titles. Kid hit a hurricane rana off the apron to the floor as they went through a commercial break. And then we come back and Cole just notes Seamus, Ryback, Wade Barrett, Rusev, and R-Truth have been added to the Elimination Chamber for the vacant IC title with one more name to be added. And Booker notes what a stacked match that sounds like. Sure. Stacked. So yeah. stacked that Way will not be watching. Elimination Chamber. I will I be watching the show, but I won't be. I mean, not necessarily for that match. Yeah. Kid hit a springboard elbow onto Big E, and then Kingston's in. He applied the sharpshooter. Big E broke it up. And then they double teamed Tyson in the corner with stomps, and we got the disqualification finish. Cesaro then attacks both of them, goes for the giant swing to Kingston, but Woods runs in. They all fight. Then the Lucha Dragons run in. They do dives off the top to the New Day. Los Matadores follow them. Then the Ascension run in, followed by the primetime players. And the primetime players got a good response as they cleared the ring. Dragons hit stereo dives to everyone on the floor. And then the players double-teamed Woods. Darren Young hit the gut check. And Cole announces that, guess what? These are the six teams who just all happened to come out here. So these are your six teams in the chamber. Two of which are over, and then four teams that will just be in there. To what, which two are you referring to? I would say the New Day and Kid and Cesaro are Lucha, teams that are over. Lucha Dragons. Are they really over? I think so. They haven't been on Raw for, the, for uh, you know, yeah. like two, three weeks, but I, I'd say when they do wrestle that they are over. I, I would say when you disappear for that amount of time, you're not really a priority act. No, no, I guess not. But that this is your. In all honesty, it'll actually be a pretty good match with mm -hmm. the Matadores, the Dragons in there. Yeah, it'll actually probably be a pretty fun match given who's in there and the fact that these teams are going to get like twenty minutes, which they never get for a tag team match. I mean, to be in a gimmick match like this is is sort of like the highest billing we've seen for a tag team championship match in a long, long time. So I expect them to, to put a lot of great spots in there. There's a lot of great wrestlers in this. I'm sure they'll be very creative. And they hopefully will pace the eliminations because it could get really clunky with 12 guys. Now, in how there. are they going to do Like, is it individual? Or are they going to do individual um, in, like per team, right? I so, would imagine you yeah. uh, pinfall, you and your partner are eliminated. So, so two people inside each chamber, Yes, I assume. There's yes. going to be a lot of people in that. Yeah, maybe three for New Day. That's not much space, man. Maybe yeah. Three people. Especially with Big E. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really good stuff, I thought, at the end with the... All the yeah, players. they did a lot of big stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman Reigns, they announced, will return on SmackDown. What what a trip he has oh, gone on. He yeah, was... Uh, man, we missed him for one Four whole days. night. Yeah. But he will return on SmackDown, <laughs> i.e. we have nothing for him. Or does it appear we have anything for him at Elimination Chamber? He feels like odd man out. His Unless they put him with Bray. Uh, or Orton. Yeah, there was no Orton either tonight. Yeah. I don't see that one with the two baby faces. But maybe Wyatt and Roman might be just a holdover match. Power bond him. Uh, yeah, possible. This coming Wednesday on Review Away, myself and Wei Ting are going to be reviewing the October 29th, 1984 episode of WWF TNT featuring a battle between Brutus the Barber Beefcake and his clothing. John Cena comes out and we get a USA chant. He holds up the title points out these servicemen in the crowd and claims to the people that this is our championship. And out comes Kevin Owens, who walked ever so slowly to the ring, and he was not going to risk any injury uh, playing to the crowd. Didn't lift his arms once. No. Very safe walk. Yeah. Owens gets on the mic, and he congratulates Cena on his win at Payback, says that Cena knows exactly who he is, and people who don't know who I am are not worth my time. And Cena, for the benefit of the doubt, introduces him as Kevin Owens, the NXT champion, because quite honestly, a lot of the people probably didn't know who this guy was. Yep, I don't doubt that. Um, and that's to be expected. A absolutely. Yeah. This is, this you is know, not... four million people on Raw that are not, the vast majority are probably not watching NXT. They were not in his hometown like they were with, uh, did with Sami Zayn. 
says that Cena shouldn't feel bad for the Sami Zayn injury a few weeks back because he went into that match already hurt by something that Owens did and said this Wednesday on TakeOver, he's going to finish the job that he started. Cena comes back saying none of these fans are a waste of time and then refers to Owens as young man and goes to offer him his advice And Owens just cuts him off, saying, I may not have been in the WWE as long as you, but I've been doing this for 15 years, and I've been doing this longer than you, and you don't get a right to give me advice. Love that. This was great. That was was just uh, scripted really well, delivered really well, full of confidence. Immediately, just in that little interaction, he gained so much credibility just as somebody on the level of John Cena. Like, that's, it's, it was believable just even after that. Cena puts over Zayn and calls Owens a scared kid and says if he underestimates Zayn, he's going to lose the title on Wednesday and says the challenge is open, but Owens notes he's a prize fighter who already has his own prize and says no to the open challenge, which begs the question of what, what a travel day this guy put in front of him for this open challenge. Well, I mean, he got a lot of airtime on TV. I guess so. It was a strategic placement for himself. And And he had a meeting with Triple H. That's true. He says he will fight Cena one day, but it will be on his terms, not Cena's, and then out of nowhere kicks Cena in the gut and presses him in the air into the sit-out powerbomb, leaving Cena laying, and he grabs the U.S. title, puts it on the mat, steps on the U.S. title while holding up the NXT title. So awesome. So awesome. I mean... That was a visual of this guy stepping on the, on that title. It was a visual that didn't require a table spot, didn't require thumbtacks, didn't require anything, but just a man stepping on a belt, and it got a, a gasp out of me. You know what I mean? I didn't really gasp, but in my mind, I gasped. A Canadian, no less, <laughs> stepping on the American flag yeah. in belt form. I mean, and I think that that goes to show you how much, how great of a job they've done with this John Cena U.S. title run to the point where this is the U.S. title. Why do I care about that? Why do I care about anybody stepping on this thing? But now it's to me, it's, it's actually your title. It's, he said so. This is our title. Not my he stepped title. on our title. <laughs> not my personal title, but I value it. I definitely value. I, I see the value there. Um, and we didn't get a match tonight. But nor I, should we have. No, nor should we have. Because no real good could have really come out with the lack of promotion. If you're going to do a match, at least, I think, promote it a little bit. Also, um, you know, you weren't going to... I would would have hate, hated to see Kevin Owens lose to John Cena just in a throwaway match on Raw. Yeah, I mean, I, this was way more effective than a match of him going toe-to-toe with Cena. And what they have in store obviously made a lot of sense why they weren't going to do the match. And it, this, this was great. Yeah. This was really good. It put some focus on this guy who felt like he was at Cena's level. He wasn't... You know, embarrassed, he wasn't belittled, he felt like he was on Cena's level. And despite the lack of match, I think it continues what this whole John Cena U.S. title run is about, and that's elevating new talent. Every single week he goes out there and gives a bit of his, his, you know, rank to a a, a new up-and-comer, and he did that tonight, but it was on the mic instead of in the ring. During the commercial break, we got a commercial for Swerved, which may be the worst... Show WWE has ever produced. I, I want to watch this. Oh boy! If you didn't see it, it's essentially their version of Punked, hosted by uh, Dolph Ziggler in 2015. Yeah, yeah, swerved. Even down to the name, swerved. It yeah. looks horrible. It, but the fact that it's like scripted stunts, it looks terrible. The fact that it's like professional wrestlers, though, it, 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 it's uh, it's got my interest. It's kind of like Total Divas in that, like, if this was a, sh- a show with anybody but pr- you know people in the professional wrestling world, I wouldn't be interested, but I'll I'll give it a shot. We'll review it, maybe. I've put you through a lot, so this will be my comeuppance. Dolph Ziggler and Stardust. We came back from a commercial break with the words, yeah, one, two, three, from Michael Cole, who didn't realize we were back from break, and JBL and Booker just told him to wake up and then proceed to make fun of him for the rest of the match. Ziggler beat Stardust with the zigzag, a minute 27. Cole is in the ring to interview Ziggler. And Ziggler jokes, I'm so hideous, in re- reference to the stitches he has on his head from you a... You can't even see him. Uh, they, they're, they're they were visible. That noticeable. Yeah, well, no one laughed at this joke. Um, this was from his head-on collision with Seamus. Head-butted him right in the forehead. Seamus was fine. Ziggler sliced his head he open. He was like the tow truck that <laughs> rammed, it, it rammed into my Civic. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he says that... 
This cut hurts, but not as much as losing to Sheamus. Says how chicks dig scars. And then Cole announces that Ziggler will be the final entrant in the chamber match for the IC title. A title that we have seen Ziggler win, I don't know how many times, but this excited him. He said, his exact words were, it's about time, Michael. I mean, like, yeah, it's about time that Dolph Ziggler had a chance to compete for the IC title. Like, how can, how can he even pretend to be excited about this? So then Lana comes out. And this was, she came into the ring, and there was just this awkward stare that went on forever between the two, like they were two children discovering other life forms for the first time, like just looking at each other weird. It was just so... Two children discovering other life forms. Or like, I don't know, like discovering... A, the a, aliens? Playing with a toy or something. And then Lana proceeds to kiss him. The crowd then chants one more time, so they kiss again. I'm taking notes of all this. <laughs> Ziggler's then looking around thinking it's a setup. Rusev comes down, attacks Ziggler, stares down Lana and starts yelling at her, proceeding uh, to Lana slapping him. Rusev then gets upset. Ziggler hits him with the zigzag, leaves with Lana, and thus ended a, a bizarre segment that will probably end up on uh, Swerved at some point. <laughs> it was definitely awkward. And I have a feeling like it seemed like Rusev was late for his cue to come out because it just... It seemed like they were just, like, awkwardly, you know, like, it wasn't even that, like, you know, um, uh, flirtatious awkwardness. It was just, like, just awkward. And uh, and the kiss. I if Lana's know. turning babyface to be paired with Ziggler, good luck. Sort of a demotion. She's going to be forgotten about in a month. I really hope this is just a swerve and she ends up with somebody else. Because this is going nowhere for her as the babyface love interest of Dolph Ziggler. Um, I do think that there's still a possibility <laughs> this could all be a swerve. <laughs> <laughs> and she helps Rusev win the IC title? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> because it just, this was just that bad. <laughs> like, this is that bad that I, I really have to think that the bad acting was done on purpose. For all I enjoyed of the Rusev-Lana <laughs> segment earlier, I disliked about this particular segment. Kane is walking in the backstage area, and he passes by Adam Rose and Rosa Mendez making out. That was their whole role for tonight, mm -hmm. making out. Sure. Uh, just love in the air. Yeah, I guess so. They just watched the last segment, and they're like, hey. For anyone thinking that Adam Rose was going anywhere after that E60 special, I think we got our confirmation. Now he's on been TV weeks. this week, at least. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. The guy who everyone sympathizes as a father, we have now put into a, a love interest angle with Rosa Mendez. He should be in a uh, father of the year feud with Titus. Oh, yeah. Really. yeah. More of Rosa Mendez coming up later on in the show, by the way. Okay. You thought this was creepy. I'm excited. He's got nothing on this next guy. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan took, it, took on Fandango and Zack Ryder. Uh, they just murdered Fandango. Zack Ryder came in. A rare in-ring appearance on Raw for Zack Ryder, mm -hmm. another special attraction, who got in a missile drop kick, his most offense on television in about three years, and then ran into a spinning side slam, and Harper and Rowan hit their super kick by Harper into a Rowan full Nelson slam for the win at 327. The announcers put them over as these gigantic monsters who apparently are at best the seventh best tag team in the company. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I didn't get that impression because of the fact that they were left out. I, obviously, they're protecting them. They don't want to associate them with, you know, the Los Matadoras. I think... I really liked, you know, this was a simple showcase match for these two, and I like that they're repackaging as just basically two giant big brutes who are weird. Coming up this Sunday night on Live Audio Wrestling, Jason Agnew and Dan Lebransky are running through all of the news in professional wrestling, and we are going to be joined by Samoa Joe on the program, as well as Dave Meltzer, your phone calls, and so much more. Tune in Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern at LiveAudioWrestling.com. Then in the back, Triple H shakes Kevin Owens' hand and says he has the match. And then goes to speak to Renee Young. He says he wanted John Cena on his terms and the authority has given it to him. And it will be John Cena against Kevin Owens at Elimination Chamber 
on May the 31st. It really is unprecedented, you know? I mean, I think the fact that they've had guys compete on Raw against John Cena from NXT, uh, you know, was was already big enough. But um, to jump right from your developmental to a pay-per-view, it's... Um, I think it shows how much they 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 are trying to cater towards the um, audience that watches NXT, you know? Like, even though Kevin Owens, Owens is, isn't a star to the people in, in attendance tonight, I think there's a large portion of the people that watch your network, that subscribe to your network, that will subscribe to your network to watch a match like this. I really hope that next Monday on Raw, Kevin Owens is allowed to do a promo about... Mm-hmm. Everything that his character has been based on, the fact that he's been looked over his entire career, Mm -hmm. and in one night, he can knock off the biggest star in the company at Elimination Chamber, and he gets five minutes on Raw for a promo. That is going to be the most anticipated match at that show at the end of the month. Well, they definitely have a a guy here who can not only, uh, you know, impress people in the ring, but he's a great talker. Let's face it, the fact that he's hired... You know, looking the way he he does, it's not because he's a great wrestler. It's because because he he can talk. He can talk, and um, they should just capitalize on that and give this guy airtime on Raw. My question is, how do you think this will affect the you know the NXT show on Wednesday? If anything, I think it has more people aware of it. What about the title? I think he's got to keep the title because I don't feel that Zayn. It's it's a question as to how how his his shoulder is. Like no one's really sure of how bad it is. I, I, I don't like the idea, regardless of Owens losing that title mm-hmm. on Wednesday and then coming back to face Cena. I think he, he has to win, and I like the idea of U.S. champion versus NXT champion. And even if he loses, I think that um, it's not a negative for Owens. This whole thing, I believe, is as much a, you know promoting Kevin Owens as it is just promoting the, the NXT brand. And you know thank goodness that uh, it's Triple H's baby. Otherwise, I mean, you remember Taz versus Triple H. No, oh, a, a huge that. moment, a, a turning point mm-hmm. in in WWF business. ECW history. Final segment featured Triple H, Stephanie, and Kane in the ring with a red carpet setup. Stephanie puts over how inspiring it is for talent to reach the brass ring, and there are none bigger than Rollins, who comes out with security. Hunter says he believed in him since NXT, and he's lived up to every claim he has made. Sees the reflection of the cerebral assassin in Rollins, to which Stephanie says, Wow. And then it gave him goosebumps watching Rollins win with the pedigree at the pay-per-view. Passes the mic over to Kane, who reluctantly puts him over. Says, we never saw eye to eye because I'm a foot taller than you. <laughs> and then Kane, ever the, uh, the avid editor, put together a beautiful <laughs> video package for Seth Rollins. A music video, no less. And Kane was busy over the past week putting this together. Some really nice J cuts in there. Yeah, incredible by Kane, who said last week, you know, I don't need this job. It's clearly he's got, man, he has many options. Editor, dentist. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's many ways Kane can, uh, as a a libertarian. I mean, the guy has many, many doors open post-wrestling. Noble then comes back saying the cream always rises to the top. It was an honor to protect Rollins. When Dean Ambrose comes out, there's Justin Bieber chance. He wants the title match at, a, at Elimination Chamber. Rollins says he's at the back of the line. Stephanie gets into Ambrose's face, but says that Rollins is a fighting champion and then tells Rollins to get him. And Rollins is surprised by this, but then goes to attack Ambrose who fights Rollins. They go to the floor. Ambrose back body drops Rollins onto the announce desk. He fights off security and then reveals a stack of cinder blocks which have made their way ringside. Funniest thing about those cinder blocks. You never, it, literally never see them coming. Could it be just that, that, that they have cinder blocks there the whole time? I mean, I, I, I also question why a multi-million dollar company will choose to use stacked cinder blocks with the uh, uh, tablecloth over it instead of a, just a table. Maybe they thought it was the IC title from the opening segment, and it's just growing. They had it under uh, the, what? S- the same black-like drapes. But cinder blocks? Uh, well, they, they, didn't, they couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I assume Dean Ambrose just like snuck those in, you know? So he puts Rollins' head on the cinder blocks and holds up a chair to which Stephanie begs him off, gives him the title match, and then he goes to hit him anyway when Mercury takes the chair 
fights them off again. Kane goes after Rollins. He catches him with a big boot. Ambrose avoids a choke slam, hits the slingshot clothesline, but then Rollins jumps him from behind, pedigrees Ambrose, and poses with the title above Ambrose. Yeah, I'm never a big fan of any time a babyface basically uses violent threats to get what he wants. It just doesn't seem like a very heroic thing that um, you know I, I think somebody would do. Um, but nonetheless, you know this this episode really was at least this final segment was was done to push Dean Ambrose as your main star heading into this next pay-per-view. And I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, they but. had to build Elimination Chamber and Warp Speed. You have your four key matches. Um, the only people unaccounted for are Reigns and Orton. But there you go. That was Raw. Good in terms of the uh, progression for Elimination Chamber. And, and I think with Owens, that's a match that people are genuinely interested in. A very fresh match. And that was probably the high point of Raw. Mm-hmm. That and Lana... The both high and low points, maybe, on this show. Be sure to check out Live Audio Wrestling on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow us at Law Radio, and you can join in on the discussion at lawradio.proboards.com. It's free to sign up for our message board where you get to chat with other law listeners, provide your feedback, and check out all of our archived episodes. Before we get out of here, we have some tough enough videos to get to. People, after that elusive review of Raw endorsement, as we get closer and closer to tough enough, and uh, teased it earlier, but up first is uh, the Rosa Mendez fan. L.R. Barbosa. Here we go. Hello, boys and girls. I am L.R. Barbosa. I'm 19 years old, and I'm from Mongagua, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And this right here is why I'm tough enough for life. You know, Life. since her debut in 2008, she showed me a simple fan can make the difference. <laughs> this is why I wake up. This is why I train my body and my voice. This is why I <laughs> this live. Voice. If I am who I am today, she is the reason. And I'm sure I am the only one who is stud enough. To give Rosa Mendes a chance. What? <laughs> I don't think he understands the concept of what tough enough is. Give her a chance to what? I, I have no this idea. Like, he's auditioning to have sex with her, not not to be a wrestler. It's definitely the, the creepiest one, but it, it's, it's the reason he wakes any, up. Any excuse to send a video that, that she might see. So she could, she could see this. I'm sure she watches. All right, up next we got... What's this dude's name? We got uh, Henrik... Adamson. Tough enough. I'm tough enough. I'm lifting weights. I'm buff enough. Woo! Oh! Oh my gosh. Did y'all catch um, the 2015 Payback pay per view? Did y'all see it? Oh, I wish y'all saw it with me. Y'all can see it for the uh, low cost of uh, $9.99 a month. Thanks to the WWE Network. So uh, uh, once you uh, go online and you uh, subscribe, and then you're allowed to watch the Payback pay-per-view, I want y'all to click ahead right after the Adrian Neville Bad News Barrett match, right? Or King Barrett. And right before the main event, there was, there was, there was a little, uh, there was a little uh, tough enough kind of promo deal happening there. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, y'all should check that out. What? Because, uh, uh, uh That's, uh, to your point, what are you guy, talking about? Mm, this is the worst mm, one I have come he, uh, across, like, and the uh, most featured. unlikable oh! person. So I guess I'm tough enough, I'm tough enough, oh! <laughs> You know, because I... Because what, what I find, This like, went on for two minutes. This was a horrible entry. What I find, like, so, uh, the worst about these doing these is, like... I mean, I'm just watching dudes take their shirt off, like... Who should not be taking their shirt off. You know what I mean? Like, just because it's t- it's a tough enough video, yes, they want to see your physique. Don't enter if you don't have a good physique. Okay? And this guy, this guy's okay. Like, I'm, I, I'm one to talk, I know, but... It wasn't about the I'm just watching a dude. We're making everybody watch this, you know, just a dude with his shirt off, with a uh, uh, emo hair and a, a white, uh, whatever, like a, a white piece of. He's still going. He's still going. 
tough Same. enough. He's tough enough. I'm buff enough. Uh, I mean, legit heat that he does generate. I mean, it's such an unlikable That's true. Personality. If, if only they could afford 10 minutes of airtime dedicated to this guy every single week just to cut a promo while announcers talk over it. I think he, he could definitely get over it. He's still talking. All right, enough. Okay, one more. <laughs> this oh, man. Oh, how, boy. how do you not already sign this guy up based on this alone? <laughs> we got Cody Harden. <laughs> oh, Jesus. My name's Cody Harden from Southeast Georgia. I'm tired of working at this furniture store. I'm ready to work in the ring. And I'm tough enough. If you got any questions or any doubts, talk to Titus. Pledging in the seventh D for Omega Sci Fi. Ain't no cakewalk. Land the top, brother Georgia. All right. Okay. I well, do enjoy the length. Simple and to the point. Twenty. And seconds. knows a celebrity mega dad. Yes, that's right. He's a, and he he knows Titus and the image of him hoisting this couch. This is great. I think this guy uh, gets my endorsement. I, honestly, simply by the sheer size of the guy, what it looks like. Unless that's a very small couch. I'm assuming it's not. I'm assuming it's this a small is a very big seat. guy. I think he actually might uh, get a, some some consideration. Less is more. Less is more. 20 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Learn from the best. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up the show. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. We'll be back Wednesday with Review Away at LiveAudioWrestling.com reviewing the October 29th, 1984 episode of Tuesday Night Titans featuring none other than Brutus the Barber Beefcake minus his clothes. Tune in for that. What does that mean? Oh, Find boy. out Wednesday on Review Away. And then, of course, tune into Live Audio Wrestling every Sunday night, 11 Eastern. And we will chat with you next week on Review A Raw.